Okay, I'll begin again with Mr. Weber. And I'll make this as quickly as possible. A question that encompasses public safety, uh, a question that encompasses culture, uh, a question that encompasses a question of what, what, do, what do we uh, do with public property being used for religious ceremonies. Uh, in Trotta, as mayor, as a strong mayor, how would you, first of all, administer the Entrada, permit the Entrada, and how would you have dealt differently with the mess that we had last summer? Well, I don't want to uh, look backward, I want to look forward. Um, I've studied the history of the Entrada, and I've studied the history of uh, Santa Fe, because I'm a deep believer that we have to learn from history. So the first thing I would do would be to try to embrace Santa Fe's history and make every part of it something that we teach, and we teach accurately and we teach fully. Uh, there's a program in other parts of the country called Facing History and Ourselves. It's a, uh, a, a, a curriculum that asks students to look at the Holocaust and learn from the Holocaust. I think we have an opportunity here in Santa Fe to set a national example of how we deal with deep traumatic historical experiences and turn them into learning opportunities. So the first thing I would do would be to call together all the people who are affected and have been affected by the Entrada and try to write a curriculum around that experience and take that curriculum into our schools. I would also make sure that in, in, in the enactment of the Entrada, we tell history from all sides of the uh, experience. The Entrada doesn't belong to any one group or any one organization. It belongs to the history of Santa Fe and it should reflect that history. I would also try to get, as we're seeing now happening, try to get ahead of the problem, not wait for it to become a flashpoint, but sit down as has been done more recently with all the participants and all the people who are affected by it, people in leadership positions, in religious organizations, in the Pueblos, and ask their advice on how to make the history of Santa Fe something that is a healing experience rather than a division and a divisive experience. Mr. Trudeau. Thank you for that question. As probably the only one up here that has participated in the Entrada, and I will say I did portray Romeo de Vargas in 1994. Um, it's part of our culture. Uh, but what, what needs to happen is you don't wait one week before fiestas and the Entrada to start having these conversations. These conversations should have happened months and months in advance. And that's something I have said over and over. When elected mayor, those discussions will, be, will commence immediately between all stakeholders. And all stakeholders will be asked to the table. That is what's not happened. I've been, I've talked to many, many, I've, I'll give you an example, I've talked to the Caballos de Vargas. They were never invited to the table. Why is that? I mean, th you know, this is the organization that's putting it on. Shouldn't they be at the table to have that discussion? I want everybody at the table, you know, I don't want to sit across from you. I've said, in my administration, the table's going to be round. Everybody's going to have an equal, equal seat at my table because I want to have those discussions. I want to find out what isn't working, why it's not working. By having those collaborations, we can come to a consensus. I know we can, I, but even I'll give you this for Indigenous State here on the plaza. A resolution was read that a meeting wanted was going to take place between the mayor and the city council. Well, it has. It, at least I haven't been part of those conversations. I'm not sure if they have been taking place. We need to start having that dialogue because I do not want to see what happened on the plaza this year, last year. Sorry, happened this year. I said, by, by bringing everybody at the table, having those discussions, we can come to a consensus. We're not gonna change history, people. But we, we can get a better understanding of it, and like I said, by having the dialogue with our native brothers and sisters at the table, those, those organizations that are doing it, all, I do believe we can come to a consensus, and we can make this list better than it ever has been. Thank you, Mr. Isaac. Thank you. To get to a part of the question, obviously the First Amendment protects speech and even speech that is offensive to some. 
and unless the illegal permits for the use of public spaces should be granted. Uh, that said, those taking out those permits should be required to pay for services incident to the issuance of that permit. Uh, and that, I think, strikes a reasonable balance in terms of uh, offering uh, people the opportunity to express themselves under the First Amendment and uh, the privilege of doing it, which may come with costs. So that's how I feel about issuing the permit and how we need to handle that. On the issue of the Entrada, um, I, I too uh, am a uh, student of the history and uh, uh, I'm actually about three quarters of the way through Sando's book and uh, also a volume on de Vargas's letters from the New World uh, back when he was uh, in New Mexico. Uh, history, uh, there's an old expression, uh, uh, you're entitled to your opinion but not the facts. Uh, so we have to deal with the facts of history straight up uh, and uh, uh, straightforward. I can tell you that there have been meetings. I mean, before the Entrada occurred, uh, I did go with the police chief and the city manager out to Tezuque Pueblo, met with the tribal governor and with the leadership there, talking about what was anticipated to be a protest of some unknown size, estimated 90 to 900 uh, individuals. So steps were undertaken. Uh, what I think I learned from that experience is that the issue is much broader and so there have been follow-up meetings, I know, with Archbishop Lester, uh, who has called for changing those celebrations that cause injury, uh, as well as with the Old Pueblo Council, and those will continue. Thank you, Mr. Weiser. Thank you. Um, you know, this issue really um, gets emotional to me and almost personal because um, I, I have a mixture of Native American and Spanish uh, heritage. And, you know, when we have these celebrations, uh, specifically the fiesta, I mean, this is the longest running community celebration in the country. You can't just go in there and start making wholesale changes without having the right people at the table and making sure that you have an adequate dialogue well in advance of the actual event. And so um, this is something that needs to be treated with the utmost respect. Uh, an understanding of all the various perspectives. But we have to acknowledge that it's naive for us to take a specific point in time that was peaceful, that was preceded and succeeded by violence and oppression. And it's naive of us to say, oh, it's just, that was a peaceful slice of time. We, we need to acknowledge that and address it and move on, uh, as Alan said. We need to start looking forward now, you know, I think, it, I think it's healthy for us to go back and look at what happened. You know, should the city have permitted that? Uh, should the city have placed so many restrictions on people's uh, free speech, establishing a free speech zone? Um, to me, I was appalled. I was embarrassed as a city council that we would have that. And, and look, I, I respect our previous chief. He's from New York City. He worked together with the city attorney to plan how this was all going to go down, but uh, free, free speech zones may work in New York City, but not in Santa Fe. Um, so what we need to do going forward is we need to get everybody together, and we need to rethink about how we're going to recognize this, and perhaps in lieu of the Entrada, have some very tasteful, uh, respectful, inclusive historical events to commemorate uh, the entire part of the history leading up to the Entrada. Thank you. There's no What happened most recently sort of goes to the heart of the community policing issue. If you saw the, the New Mexican got a bunch of the emails from the police department and honestly the police had kind of worked themselves up into thinking that this was going to be a gigantic and potentially really scary protest or something like that. And free speech zones are nonsense. And in Santa Fe we, um, don't have um, large-scale protests generally, and you know it was just it was sort of a, a reaction that was really out of balance because 
the police weren't looking for uh, people to talk to in the community to understand what was really happening and we really have to turn things around so that we have a grounded um, in our community police department who knows how to find members of the community and ask them what's going on and understand and just do the due diligence of community work ahead of time. And on the Entrada, you know, there's no question that we need to, to heal the divides. We need to look at how the city does permitting because really what the city controls are the permits in the police department. But again, as Mayor Koss says, the mayor has the ability to bring people together and we need to have these conversations and to be unafraid to say what hurts, uh, what is deeply important in culture, and to facilitate that conversation. That's the job of a leader in the community, to really open the doors, bring people in, and say, let's talk about this. Let's understand what your perspective is and why it's important. And do that with a respectful and dignified treatment of everyone, because there's culture, there's historical facts, and critically, there's what happens in the future. And we need to really come together and talk about this in an unafraid way. Thank you. A quick follow-up, and uh, we're going to have to try to ask Mr. Maestro 